the southern area of the West Coast, a breed of customized Volkswagen has evolved that is, for the most part, completely unlike what the average VW freak has come to expect a customized VW to look. Needing a term to best describe the difference between this style and the others, we here at the magazine is settled on the California look. I'm Mark Akulian, uh, born and raised in uh, California. Um, yeah, so my first experience was my mom's friend brought home a 66 VW Beetle. And as any seven-year-old would do, jumped in the back seat, back in the luggage compartment, and she drove around, and the sound, the smell, and everything about the vintage Volkswagen was intoxicating, so I was hooked. And then I grew up uh, in Orange County, uh, close to OCIR, so I had a lot of fast Volkswagens running around town as a kid, riding my bicycle and skateboard. So I immediately felt like I wanted a fast Volkswagen and uh, had access to all the different great uh, people in the Orange County area. So my first Volkswagen was a 57 Ragtop. I got when I was 15. Uh, immediately uh, went and customized it, put four and a half and five and a half inch alloys, had it painted by Al Martinez, um, had a Don Strong gearbox, K-Well 2084 IDA motor. So that was my first car when I was 16. Uh, so automotive has always been in my genes, along with surfing. And I was belonged to one VW club in high school. It was very short lived. Uh, the name of it was Volkelmann Strasse. Uh, and that was here in Costa Mesa, and it was a it was a short-lived thing, and um, it was fun. I'm not so much of a club guy per se. I'm kind of a solo rebel, uh, street racing. Just go out and, and get, jump in a fast car and go run around the streets and enjoy cars because I'm an automotive grease monkey at heart. Um, love the thrill of a noisy, fast, exciting, white knuckle drive, uh, which is what the Volkswagen Cowlick streetcar is. It's fast, dangerous, um, a lot of fun. And I'm heavily influenced by the 70s um, era. Uh, the styles, um, it was simple. You know, the true meaning of the Cowlick car was to strip it down, simplify it, clean it up, give it a punk rock attitude um, and unsuspecting. So uh, this, I've built many, many cars, but this particular car, my first oval was supposed to turn out something like this, but I was heavily influenced by the 80s and, and stuff. So that car went a little flashy. It was in hot VWs also. Uh, it had a cable turbo motor. Um, so when I, made a decision about 30 years ago, I, I was gonna stick to uh, be disciplined and build a traditional 70s cow look car. And I'd been collecting parts since I was 15 years old, going to bug-ins and the inner shows and all the other events. Uh, so this car uh, picked up this, yeah, picked up this uh, ragtop as a started project. It, it had many parts going, but it was nowhere near being completed. Uh, got it home and um, started tearing into it and uh, found out there was a lot of things that weren't to my liking. So I mean, it 
every nut and bolt, every piece got stripped down and um, cleaned up. Uh, so I had to go with the traditional Aronson Lazenby look that um, the added, the idea behind this build was if I was an executive of a VW parts company back in the 70s and uh, the Kellogg issue came out with the Aronson white car uh, and I was a company, what would we build? What was my vision of a car that would fit that era and kind of complement and be, you know, another version of that sign of the time. So this is my interpretation of what I would have built had I been of age back in this in 75. So uh, the uh, man, there's so many pieces on this. Every every part has a story. Um, start with the uh, Danny Gabbard of Gab Fab, who's one of the best metal finisher guys in the uh, in the world. Brought him the car, told him what I wanted, dechromed it. Wanted to keep the vent wings. Didn't want to. Didn't want to do go one piece windows because one piece windows weren't out yet in the 70s. When the one one piece window came out, so it, it was it was a, I believe it was a late 70s, early 80s thing. Um, uh, is it John Ersk? He has that 67. He he has stories about uh, that he has the first set in his. Uh, my oval window when I took my oval window to Al Martinez, um, I had my buddy drive me out to San Bernardino Glass and they had one piece window kits and I bought a kit and brought it to Al Martinez and they rolled their eyes. They didn't want to do it because it required a lot of work. So uh, that car got one piece windows. But this, so that's what I was saying. That car went, it was, I was influenced by that car, by that, that car was influenced by that, but it evolved in the eighties because I was influenced by going to the shows and with the trends. So which car turned out beautifully and I love it. It uh, was a great piece, but uh, this one I try to keep traditional, like with the plaid. Uh, this was really similar to um, Carmen Ghia, California Sting. That's what it was, California Sting. So uh, the, this is all the materials, all the colors um, are things that I have uh, picked out and studied and uh, lost slip, sleep over to pick out. Um, so the try to keep the interior very simple. To stock, a stock, stock is good. Factory is fast. Factory is functional. Uh, so didn't want to do too much. Eliminate the back seat. Back seat delete. That's all handmade. Um, I uh, kind of winged that. Just I made that in about two hours with a with a saw, and it's functional. It's Very nothing functional, nothing yeah. fancy. And uh, it's important about a Cowlick car is you don't want to build something. Although I love all the, the beautifully custom built stuff, you want functionality and simple. Something other people can relate with that they can do in their garage. So uh, that tachometer is out of a Puma GT the first year, so it's a white needle. So where's the Speedo? Uh, speedo, you don't need a Speedo. Who cares how fast you're going? You know, the, 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 the guys in the black and white cars, will, if, if they think you're going too fast, they'll let you know. Uh, so you just want to know how fast your engine is going because sometimes, and even though that's only a 6,000 RPM tack, um, the needle still travels, travels way past that. Um, yeah, the Jeanberg five speed, um, Jim Kaforsky, another great, very knowledgeable, very, very well to do tra transmax transaxle guy. Uh, we figured out what diameter tire we, we, I was gonna run. We, I knew what horsepower and what engine power plant I was having. And we went to, got the, uh, the gear wheel out and we did a 412 ring and pinion. Uh, 355 first, 221 second, uh, 156, 121. Uh, and the fifth gear, which is the stock fourth, I can't remember, I think it's a 87 I have to go back to my notes. Um, I did go, I was going 0.93, but to have all close ratio of five, uh, but we decided not to, because it, it's not meant to be a, a race car, it's meant to be a really fast, hot VW's uh, street car. Uh, so, and then, yes, the uh, coveted BRM magnesium wheel, beautiful. These are real ones. 
and these are uh, from a good friend of mine's very um, famous ragtop, um, really close friend. Uh, he would borrow one of my cars all the time because he drove a VW bus, so he'd borrow one of my cars to go drive long trips and visit his family. And he decided to move, and he wanted my Mercedes, he wanted my car, and I wanted his wheels, and he knew I would be a good gatekeeper for him. And so we traded, I traded these wheels um, for a Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes <laughs> yeah, I gave him a Mercedes-Benz, beautiful, AMG E-Class, top-notch. Um, he's a good mechanic himself. Um, I gave him an Ocrossa 78.4 crankshaft with a wedge-mated flywheel, Rimco Super Rods. I gave him original MP linkage end pieces for carburetors. And I think that was it, and I got a set of wheels. Oh, and I had to buy him a set of, I had to buy him another set of front tires. I bought him some of these. So I bought four of these Morosos so I could run some too. Um, the, the brakes, this has, this car has a full complete re, uh, restored, rebuilt set of Porsche 356B brakes off of 64, Porsche 356, I believe. Uh, com completely relined with Porterfield competition lines. Um, I sent all the drums to Martin Willis in uh, Colorado at the machine shop. Um, put new steel sleeves in there and he does it his custom way where he pins them so the sleeve can't move out because that's a problem was um, the sleeves if they're not done right. Uh, so uh, I rebuilt all the wheel cylinders. Um, suspension is pretty much st stock with a with an adjustable beam. Uh, ironically, the adjustable beam on this car, I had built a 60 convertible many years ago. And when I sold it, they didn't want it lowered. So I sold the beam, put it back to stock. And then about 15 years later, I'm at the drag day and I look down and I see this beam. And I know it was mine because it had, I'd cut the, the, the stops off and I'd cut into the tower and I missed on two spots and only I would be the stupid one to make that mistake and I saw that and I had to have that beam so I purchased it and it's on the car. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the shocks, uh, I have the Hearst dual duty shocks on it. Um, uh, what else? Do I... So the headlamps, so headlight buckets, uh, new old stock rings. The CBA, uh, newer generation, cat eye bulbs. I restored them. And then I wanted to do, you know, you know about the, the Hainline um, liners. Very cool, uh, traditional old custom trick. Well, I had one, Glenn, Glenn Bornoff, uh, my good friend of mine, gave me a head. He goes, here, here, I found one of these. And I said, cool, hope, let's, where's the other one? <laughs> so I was gonna reproduce, I was gonna make my own and uh, I had some material uh, for a, a customer's car and it was laying in my garage and I walked by and it was next to the car and it, something caught my eye and I go, what is it? And I'm like, oh, that's that material. So um, I go, hey, what a great idea. So I took the pattern of the original Hainline uh, liner, laid it on the piece of material, cut it out, and then I form fitted it in here and that's... Uh, so it's a traditional, it's a different spin on it. It's handmade, it can be done in the garage. Once again, anybody can do it. So that's the cool thing about the Cowlick um, thing. It's simple, uh, nothing, nothing expensive and yeah. Yeah, thanks. License plate on it, I was 16, cruising Newport Beach as we did. Big cruiser, um, got pulled over by the police for no front license plate. And uh, I told him, well, where, where am I gonna mount it? And he goes, I don't know, get yourself a piece of steel or something. I go, what, like that, that street sign right there? He goes, yeah, whatever. And so, um, the street sign? let's say I acquired it. <laughs> it found its way into my possession and it fit the perfect fit. It's a Balboa Boulevard, Newport Beach. Newport Beach, Balboa Boulevard. Um, and so I just mounted it to the three drain holes, drilled three holes in it, and uh, uh, there it is. It, it works perfectly. It kind of so Mark Thurber's uh, gold '62 uh, Beetle with the original BRMs. Uh, 
it had a license plate that kind of floated like that in the front too and there's a few pictures of that car and i really like people have told me to take it off because it obstructs the beauty of the front but once again it's a california street car you have to abide by the rules like you know with the t-bars being a, passing the, the bumper laws hanging a front license plate cleanly i think it, it suspends it nicely you know and the lucas turn signal lights uh, traditional california look style that um, you know there's been a few stories about you know how they became but that's what you did you uh, repurpose stuff all right so stainless hood handle that's one of the early you know it's not a chrome one it's a stainless one it's I believe 67 so yeah so 61 First year for the flat tank, no gas gauge, so I wanted to expose the beauty of that tank. Um, this is this one year only? One year only, 61 gas tank. Flat, but no gas gauge in 61. But they already had a stamp, I mean, on it. Yeah, so they were going to, they must have been planning on bringing the gas gauge in in the next year uh, for whatever reason, so. Ah, interesting. It's kind of a neat piece, so. Then I modified a Wolfsburg West trunk liner, shortened it, because uh, usually this bend is up here, so I yeah. cut it and uh, re you know, mimicked the bend. Uh, I had new old stock wire cover that I got from Bugs For You back in the day. Actually had three or four of them. This is one of the survivors. You can see where the part sticker was yeah. right here. Um, yeah, so a little, little, Clean up touch. You uh, use, utilize the the plaid, the the GMC Chevrolet 1973 Highlander plaid, uh, the gray. So I wanted to tie that in. So the spare wheel, it's a new old stock uh, American Magnesium five spoke. Uh, although everyone assumes it's a Porsche pattern, uh, so ironically, it's a five on 114.5 which is the volvo p1800 oh a very unique bolt pattern so i knew it wouldn't fit obviously with a wide five and i figured well i want the magnesium wheel be neat to, i want to have a magnesium wheel to match i always think a spare wheel should be different than the one on the car just for contrast and uniqueness uh, so then uh one day I figured, hey, I have an extra wheel adapter. So I had my my buddy, Mike Curtis, it's Curtis Speed Equipment. Uh, it was a Porsche pattern one, but the studs are like right in between here. So we just clocked it and we re-drilled the pattern for the 114 and put moved the studs. So I could have, in case I did have to use it, and because of the crazy offset, which if you bolted right to the drum, it would be way in. The adapter brings the back spacing back out. Voila, uh, repurposed the wheel. Took a Volvo wheel and it adapted it with one of the early ones and pa painted that with some graphite paint to make it match the... And the funny thing is, is I go, cool, and I bolted it on. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh no, I didn't think about when it's clocked this way, you don't see the bolt pattern. So I go, oh, that's gonna look weird and then I bolted it in set it in there I go actually that looks pretty cool because you can see the so it gives the wheel from a distance a different effect I can install it yeah it bolts right on and um, yeah I can use it on the front or the rear and so that goes to my choice of the tire um, I really like the Pirelli CA67 tire it's a very good looking vintage tire and you know originally the VW um, tire of choice was a 560-15 or the 155-15 and that tire fits the you know it it, it does it 165 is too big and sticks a 135-145 bounces around the 155 fits nicely so the 155 works for the front and the rear so that's kind of purpose once again trying to think purpose uh, you know form form and function all right so back before Danny had moved out of Orange County, way back when, we're working on the metal work and I brought him, I had a brand new impy fiberglass deck lid with the scoops. And I brought it to him, I go, 
70s cow luck. We're putting this on here. He goes, we're not putting that on there. I said, well, I want that decklet on my car. So we discussed it and I said, well, let's, how about we take my original decklet and you're a great metal fabricator. How about you put some scoops in it to mimic the, the, the eyelid decklet? And uh, so he said, cool, let's do it. Showcase his talent. So he came up with the design. He built it all hand done, probably, I think he has 40 hours in these deck lids, a lot of labor. And then I brought him, this is a genuine MP badge that I got from Dave Griner from Proformance. He's an old auto house dealer in Tustin. This was in his jewel case. I, I bought it from him and I brought it to Danny and I said, hey, I want this on the deck lid because the fiberglass one has it embossed. And he goes, all right. He goes, but I'm, I want to coin it in there. So he built, he fabricated a, a tool, die, to hammer it down and, and recess the die into here to um, house the, uh, the original MP logo. So very deluxe, you know, that once again, you know, doing something traditional, own spin, um, and of quality. And uh, with Danny's beautiful talents, uh, it turned out, and now he's sold, going on to uh, sold many of them. Now, this is the first one he did, and he's done several, maybe eight or 12, I don't know how many now. And the cool thing about Danny's work is every single one he does is a little different. So, like a true artist, you know, like you would a, uh, you know, an Andy Warhol, every, every piece of art is different. Um, so every deck lid is different. There's no one the same. And uh, so very unique, very cool. Uh, Tell me about the sticker. So the sticker, yes. Yeah. So the original owner, when I got this car, that sticker was in the window. Uh, the American Legion, US American Legion, 1970. And I said, that's got to stay with the car. I have to preserve that. Um, to uh, lay tribute to the original owner. I've never met the original owner, but I always thought it would be cool if one day I'm at a show or an event or somewhere and some guy walked by and goes, holy shit, holy shit that's my, this, this is, this is, where'd you get the window? That's out of my car. And then I can tell him, this is your car. And if that ever happens, who knows? But that's yeah, just one of those unique things. You can't, you can't reproduce that stuff. You can't plan it, you can't do anything. So the 28 years it took me to build this car, this was in a protected in a box wrapped in bubble praying I never broke it because I wanted to keep that part of the car. Okay, now talking about the motor. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. Show me the motor. Wow. Nice. Yes, so this, this engine is a, 8694. Uh, it's a Berg Forge crank. I bought off Gene Berg. Uh, I saved up a ton of money. Bought the rotating assembly from Gene uh, many, many years ago in the early 90s. It must have been 91. I think my receipts either 90, oh gosh, 80, 89. I can't remember. But so Berg rotating shaft, uh, rotating assembly from the pulley back to the uh, I will. Um, this version, this engine's actually been a few different versions because uh, I did build this engine and the car took so long I put this in my 67. It was originally an 8690 um, and then I built, took it apart to freshen up for this car. Uh, it's an 8694. Ron Fleming helped me uh, right before, it was one of the last ones he did before Fat was sold. Uh, so this is a um, 8694. Uh, Ingle FK44 cam. I went kind of conservative because big, torquey, heavy street car, fun to drive, you know, uh, was the idea. Uh, the cylinder heads are a Jeff Denham uh, worked. Uh, they're Mofoco castings. I worked those, I got those heads in a trade. I gave him a bunch of engine parts that he needed to make a transportation car. In trade, he gave me the heads. So wonderful port work by him. He does great work, trained by all the greats, does his own rights. Uh, scat track manifolds I got from Gene. Um, 
they weren't available anymore, but he, uh, I guess he took a liking to me and brought me out a set. Um, so I purchased those. Uh, the carburetor linkage, that's something I built. Oh, you did? Yeah, that's something, uh, once again, Dave Greiner had this uh, weird carburetor set up for a water-cooled car and it had similar ends. And I said, those things are neat. And he ordered me some. And then I went down to the metal supply and I bought some aluminum plate and I bought a titanium rod that was 3 8 the same diameter. And kind of just dreamt it up. Um, the inner springs keep it centered. Um, the, uh, the small tab has a little bicycle chain link that I modified to and, and nutserted that to the uh, shroud for a return spring. What else? Oh, so the generator wanted to go traditional. Uh, you know, alternators are great, but um, that is a 38 amp bus generator. So a little bit gives a little bit more poop because um, you got to have good voltage to have good ignition, have a good spark. So um, let's see what else. The yes, yeah, so those car. Yep, those went through it. So these, these carburetors have been on every single engine that I've owned. This is the first set of 48 IDAs I got when I was 16. They, I got them from Dave when I bought my Dave Kwell engine, the 2084. Um, these are the carburetors from that engine, and I've always kept them. Because if you don't know, that engine, I went turbocharged. I did a Ray J turbocharge on that. So I kept the carburetors. So when that car was, car was sold to Japan, Many years ago, it sold with the, with the uh, turbocharged engine. So these these Weber carburetors have been on my 2175. They've been on my 2016. They've been on my uh, 2212. Uh, I also had another real small 1600 displacement, and they have probably 50, 40,000 miles on them. And one of when we built the engine at uh, Fat this last time, one carburetor was given us a little. So I had a worn shaft, um, so I dropped him off at Gary, and yeah, Gary went through them, did his magic, opened up the float, the, opened up the float bowls. These were two progression port style. He drilled the third progression port, um, just did his magic to them, and uh, yeah, went, running beautifully now. Um, stock cooling, uh, it's got just the, the 40 horse style. But I bought the aluminum Porsche one. When I first built, when I first finished the engine, it started to have a little bit of a drip. I pulled it off, and there was a small crack on the original cooler. So that's a recent um, put an old school breather box back here. Just went something simple. Uh, the carburetors have the uh, the grooved venturis from Gene Berg. That really helps out the uh, the airspeed. Yeah, that's another thing is uh, those, you know, I, I thought, oh, you got to richen it up and, you know, Doug and um, Beckley are like, no, the airspeed speeds up, it draws more fuel, you're probably going to have to lean the carburetors out. And sure enough, so I, you learn something new every day and that's, that's what I love about working on cars and tinkering. What size venture you put? That's the, that's the 3740 to 3740, I think it is. I can never remember, I have to look at this. But it's the smaller one, it's the conservative one. Originally it had 40 chokes in it, Venturi's. Um, and it ran wonderfully and it ran great. And uh, you know, the the, original, the previous engine was an FK87, Jeenberg 315, uh, Berg 145 Rockers on compression. And so the compression and brought everything up to the cam, and then when the cam came on, everything else took over. So it was just a beautifully running street engine. Uh, when I tore it down, I decided to go down on the cam. Uh, I figured I need to make sure that the, um, you know, but, but the tuning was right, and it it did help with the. Uh, it's really fun to drive because when you, you're on the street, I've had all the everything. I've had turbo cars. I've had high strung motors. I've had all kinds of stuff. Um, 
yeah, you get on the freeway, you, you scream through the RPMs, and then you're like, I'm going too fast. And there's, uh, it's fun for about 20 minutes, and then you want to get out. Uh, this engine's designed to where you get in it. Like I drove it to Irwindale three, four times now, three times, and you get out of it and you don't feel wore out. You're not rowing gears, you, you, you roll on the gas, you're at speed now. You don't feel like you're wringing the motor's neck and a really wonderful power plant. And with the gearing, it's just like, it's, just a, it's a really fun car to drive. Kept old school distributor, so tell, tell, tell me about it. Yeah, so, you know, being a technician mechanic at heart, I love contact points and just old school. You know, it's like drum brakes. You don't need disc brakes. If you have well, well designed and well serviced drum brakes, stop phenomenal. A, 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 a properly tuned ignition points condenser with the proper voltage and good battery power, um, everything in working order. Um, once again, the thrill in the uh, the stripped down nature of a standard ignition system is the thrill of it and the, the enjoyment I get out of it. And I've had it all. I've had MSDs, I've had Pertronics, I've had 009 with uh, CompuFires. All work great, but here we go again. The car is a traditional 70s. I wanted to build something as if it was 1975, 78, and I was what was available at that time. There wasn't electronic ignition, there wasn't, you know, there was magnetos and all that. I have a magneto for it. You'll probably see a magneto someday. Um, uh, but, you know, like with the 12 volt Bosch coil, um, yeah, I'm getting a lot of flack for leaving it blue. I've, I've been told to paint it black and put a little six volt or 12 small Bosch sticker on it, which I might do someday. But, um, you know, I've had the, the, the 40,000 volt, the red coil, where you put the resistor in, which, uh, so you don't burn up the uh, condenser. Uh, but then, what? that was a great ignition system. You run the red 40 volt with the CompuFire and the O10. The electronic guts can handle that, so you get a really strong spark out of that. I ran that for many years. Uh, but for this car, traditional O10, uh, Type 3, uh, type three um, clamp, so it's got... Nice. Yeah, so it's just one of those things that uh, I learned from a good friend of mine, Ben Petchy. He's friends with all the guys at... Bugs for you and Dave Greiner. Um, it's just when you're working on it, you, you got a wrench in your hand. It's right there. You're not, you know, it's not caught in here. It's not. You're not fighting for it. It's right here in front of you. So that comes from being a mechanic. You want to be able to work on the car easily. Um, so yeah, um, but it's a, this is a this is a new old stock O10. This is a brand new. I actually got it from uh, uh, Randy Randar uh, many many years ago. Right when the right when Samba started, popped up and I said, "New old stock 010." I said, "Oh, I gotta get that." I called him and I drove down there, met him. Great guy, rest in peace. You know, good uh, BW guy. But I got that from Randy Randar uh, many years ago. So why 010? Comparing 019 or the 009? So the 010, the 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 curve, the the, the curve that um, it comes in at. Um, it's all in at. God, I remember my specs here um, it's it's all curb is all in I believe at 24 2200 rpm and it's a um, it's a more aggressive it, it, it comes on it's it's good for a stroker motor so the, some say that the 09 is better for a higher rpm engine so for you know 86 stroke smaller cam all the timing in soon makes the power plant drive better. So the muffler is, uh, it's actually Gene Berg. So I got, got it from, I got it from Gary Berg. So if the cans are the 050 high flow Jeep muffler. Um, if you know a little bit of history about the quiet packs, um, Gene had purchased, these were Jeep mufflers bought in surplus. So Use these cause they flowed well and they were quiet and there was an abundance of them because it was war surplus. Now they had different ones. They had different ones. Some were really restrictive, so smaller engines didn't care. 
um, but they were robbed horsepower on the big high-end ones. These 050, they have an 050 casting on them. These are the highest flow ones. Um, and so this is a new old stock set that, it was a kit that Gary Berg had. Uh, the header, they had taken everything over to Tiger at A1 and did a fixture for doing quiet packs. And so they built these off that fixture, which uh, they, took in a, they took a new old stock, four tuned, built a fixture, and then made these, tested them on a car, and then Gary wasn't gonna use them, so I purchased them off of him. So uh, they are a hybrid. It's basically old school uh, pieces assembled by um, Tiger at A1. And uh, yeah, the chromes have been triple plated. The, the chrome tips have been triple plated. They're old, they're originals. Um, did do the V-band clamp and somebody was saying, oh, that's not traditional. You have a three flange. So Greg Brenton of Brintech, uh, he was about ready to, he wanted to heckle me really bad because he likes doing that. Good thing for him, he did his research. This is actually a World War II uh, patented, uh, the, uh, was it the Wright Brothers? Somebody back in the day developed that V-band clamp back in the military, back in the World Wars era. So technically it was available for use back, back, of course. So I got away with it there. I didn't know that. He's the one that told me that trivia. But so, and I was, I was concerned about that too. I go, man, none of the old cars, they all had the three bolt tri-flange. Well, Gary and um, uh, Tiger had done that clamp and uh, I said, well, I have to leave it because it, it bolted right on and it fits really nice to the car. So got away with the one there. <laughs> so that was another Danny Gabbard um, thing where he stitched in. And if you were to see this car in bare metal, you would, couldn't even tell. You could tell it slightly because the metal was same thickness, just a little bit different tint. So they're all uh, TIG welded in and metal filed. It's all metal finished, um, original but this is a original to the car because 60 was the last year for 36 horse in H pattern. So 61, first year for the 40 horse, different apron, a little bit different engine compartment because the engine style is a little bit bigger. So yeah, first year for this pattern, uh, modified by Danny Gabbard. Yeah, so that's more metal fab there. And you can see, you can see the work for the you know, he coined in the that and yeah. Again, it's all metal. All metal. It's original. Yep. And yeah, the standoff is a it's a repurposed piece from a brake master of a 40 uh, 50s uh, Mercedes Benz. And I'm working on the latch, so I've gotten flack for that not having a latch, but it works. It's hey, it's a it's a it's a hot fast, simple Cowlux street bug. And uh, uh, you just get her done. And it's, and the T-bars, so they are, they are hand built out of stainless. Stainless. That Danny Gabbard made those also. Uh, so we, you know, we, we built them to the car. Uh, try to give them the aesthetics. Um, I didn't polish them, I, I, I brushed them and then hand polished them to give them this semi-gloss. Yeah, Sheen, so that's another. So, um, a lot of new old stock pieces, a lot of new old stock pieces. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, those are old, 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 old Hot VW stickers. These are from the 70s. Period correct sticker. Yeah, steering wheels, new old stock. That is the MP GT 14, GT Deluxe. Deluxe, because it has the synthetic vinyl, or synthetic leather looking vinyl. And you can even see the little sticker in there. I don't know if you can see it in there. A lot of, the great thing about Orange County, there's so much car culture here. There's so many events. There's an event going on every weekend. So uh, go to a lot of the local, Cruises, um, 
So I definitely go to DKK. Carbs and coffee. Yeah, that's their club. They meet. That's their club meeting day at that uh, detail garage. I go there. DKP, DKP for sure. Yes, uh, DKP is doing biannually stuff. They're not doing it every month, which I think is a great balance. Uh, so. was it on uh, Ron at, at the Fat Dino did 197 uh, before I did the carburetors uh, and before I did the uh, Venturi's okay. yeah because it it def the engine feels more efficient now we got the carburetors you know got the one throttle shaft fixed from all those miles of driving put the Venturi's in it I gotta look at my notes again because I think I'm still a little fat, a little fat on the main between a 165 and a 175. I think I have a 170 right now. Like, <laughs> that's 
Dave Mason would say. Saw that, they all saw that thing in half. sunroof crank sunroof car it's got Porsche chromey so I was kind of want to do a little Porsche outlaw uh -huh. 356 feel I have that white 62 the fog machine the white one all survivor I want to put original MP5 spokes on that Dino shifter and an MP wheel just and leave it at that um, maybe get a Oh, and then my black 67, five speed in that with DC and F Weber motor. I want to uh, give that car a little more loving again and bring it back out on the street. We got an extra two liter with IDAs. I might put in another car, who knows? And enjoy this car. Put some miles on this. Give it a give it a drive the wheels off of it. I just want to say thank you for watching this video. We sincerely appreciate your support. We also appreciate the support of our sponsors since without our sponsors, our VW community wouldn't be what it is today. So the good folks at Protronics are sponsoring this video. So to show them a little bit of love, we wanted to tell you guys about the distributor here and the coil bundle that they've got going on at their protronicsbrands.com website. So check them out, you guys. Link right here. And also, don't forget to subscribe because without you guys and the support of the folks at Protronics, we couldn't bring this video to you. So thank you again for watching. We look forward to seeing you at the next car show. And if you do see us somewhere, just come up and say hi, all right? We love to meet everybody and we love to support the community. So give a little bit of love. It all goes around. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Thanks again for watching.